was it about the BMF record that made you want to say, okay, I want to take this in a totally different lane? Um, because it needed balance. You know, I, I figured that's my point in the, in the music business and the game as a rapper is to bring balance. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Not to be the best, not to be the worst, but to be the balance. And, uh, you know, I rock with Ross. I just thought it was a very dangerous thing for kids to be saying they want to be like Larry Hoover. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? My, my brother's the GD region, the whole thing, left the life alone. I've been around gangster disciples my whole life, and I watched all of them either, you know, be killed, caught up in the system, go to jail. You know, Larry Hoover's in jail forever. Right. You know, I don't want your son to be in jail forever. You know, I want your son to be like Malcolm X. You know what I'm saying? I want your son to be like, at least have the, to, to aspire to be something greater than just being in jail forever. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as Baltimore's concerned, we have Bloods and Chris, but it's not to that level of what Chicago has. Mm -hmm. Can you explain a little bit more detail for these kids out here, like how serious it is? Because, you know, they think it's just a song. They really don't know who Big Meech is, Larry. Who right. See, I, see, I'm aware of both of them. All that, that whole world. It's a, uh, you, you, the gang situation in Chicago started as clubs, you know, community organizations, you know what I'm saying, that kind of lost their way or got into drugs early in the 60s or 70s or whatever. Um, and then just kind of spiraled into turf wars and all that stuff. Some of it actually started out as just kind of like block club gang that would fight each other and then somebody got a knife and somebody bought a gun and then we have what we have right now. Um, Throw into the mix, fathers leaving, fathers not being a part of the situation, um, kids losing respect for authority, you know, they becoming the parents themselves. Um, it just spiraled out of control to what we have now, what I grew up through, which was the gang situation in Chicago, which was bananas. <laughs> you know, it was like one block is GDs, the next block is Black Souls, the next block over is Unknown Vice Lords. This, you can't go to this mall at all because it's all Latin Kings. Mm -hmm. It was so kind of separated and segregated as a child. We were li really living in fear, you know, and that's no way to live your life as a child, you know, because you're scared to leave your block because you literally might die because your friend died last week wow. leaving your block. Um, so, you know, I, I understand the gang situation but I have no respect for them, if that makes any sense. I can understand it and I can articulate it, but seeing the toll that it took on people as opposed to how it progressed people, I have no respect for it. Now, do you see Chicago getting better? Yeah, I see it getting better. There's, well, the one thing that the kids lack is hope. You know, and hope is a, a infinite resource. You just gotta get it. <laughs> you know, you gotta get kids to see it. Kids feel like they don't have, and I'm, I'm speaking directly, the kids feel like they don't, they don't have, they don't value life. Life has no value because they don't have any hope because they don't see anything beyond it. And it's more about the limitations that they put on themselves as opposed to what's put on them from the outside world. And them being able to articulate that, but it's a, it's a lack of bravery on their part to look past and look at themselves as actually being the ones who control their own destiny. I mean, some people are afraid of that power, you know, and want to kind of be controlled and want to. But I say stand up. Uh, well, speaking of standing up, Ron Fest is making a move for himself. And yeah, I saw man. you recently on a blog where you was doing a freestyle at the concert. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what Ron Fest is doing and how you incorporate it? Um, Ron Fest is running for Alderman in, in Chicago, one of, in the 20th Ward, which is one of the wards that comprises Inglewood, if I'm not mistaken. Inglewood, if, excuse me, if you watch CNN or, or watch the murder sprees that come out of Chicago over the past year, uh, a large part of that was situated in Inglewood, so he's actually running for Alderman in one of the most dangerous, violent parts of the city. Um, you know, and doing it for real. You know, he's really putting himself wholeheartedly into the political process of Chicago, which is a, another corrupt monster. But, um, you know, and when, when I, as soon as I heard about it, you know, me and Ron Fest have had our political differences right. and differences, you know, just straight out. But as soon as I heard about it, I was in solidarity, you know, and I was like, whatever you need. Whatever you, whatever you need, you know, you need, you need my radical political advice, you need some connection in the city, you need whatever, money, let's go, let's win it. Now, do you feel that hip-hop and politics can go together? Most definitely. I think hip-hop is, hip-hop was spawned from political, it was a political backlash, you know, it's a backlash to the politics, you know, of the 70s and the 80s and what have you, um, and I think it will always be so. It's, it's, it's always been the voice of the people, you know, and people are good and bad and negative positive and glamorized violence and don't glamorize violence but still the voice and the representation of people. Um, you know, I think it'll always have a point and a purpose, especially in the political arena to critique, which are critique and correct.